his line, not Seth, but his line, which, you know, a bloodline goes on and on and on and on and on. If, if his bloodline was so righteous, then why didn't he survive the flood? See, because the, the Bible makes it clear that all man is corrupt. None are exempt from that. So when we start talking about this um, uh, lineage of Seth, that Seth couldn't be a part of the Nephilim or of these giants or any of this, then uh, I'm going to debunk that scripturally. So, as more and more God-fearing people began to populate the earth, Satan instituted his Nephilim plan into action by corrupting the seed of the woman. Satan could prevent, or so he thought, prevent the birth of the Messiah. If the seed was corrupt, if he could corrupt the very seed of the woman, there could be no Messiah, nobody born who could be sinless. This was Satan's way of proving that he was equal or even better than God by not allowing this Messiah to ever come in the first place. Because whoever this Messiah was had to be fully God. Well, Satan wants the world of God to fail. But he knew that God prophesied that Satan too would have a seed. So, the Nephilim were an attempt to thwart off God's plan of salvation. At every step, these Nephilim, these giants, via these, this, this angelic uh, patronage, set out to undermine or underdo what God had set for humanity be reconciled back to him through Jesus Christ. Now, in their dominance of the earth, they reproduced so rapidly that God proclaimed that all flesh on earth had be become corrupted. Now, am I saying that we all have Nephilim bloodline in us? No, I'm not. They determined that the earth, not necessarily every single man, but that the earth was at this point corrupt. These Nephilim giants spread violence and sin that God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was continually evil. Humanity was on the verge of being wiped out with no hope of being saved from sin if every person born became part of a fallen angel. So what, what did God do? He said, I am God, you are not, I will wipe out every living thing, and I'll do it with water. Hence, there came the flood. Now, it tells us in end time prophecy very clearly, in the last days, it will be as it was in the days of Noah. Well, all the way up through the New Testament, they talk about the corruption that comes from these fallen angels, these angelics who have created these men of old, these men of renown, um, these giants, the bloodline goes on. This was the purpose of, of the flood in Noah's day. Because this is important because we're told clearly, clearly in the last days, this is the way it would be. So rather than being an act of cruelty, this flood was God's way of saving the last of humanity from complete destruction through the corruption of this seed, which Satan was very successful at doing through these fallen angelic beings, creating the Nephilim. You know, a lot of pastors and Bible scholars and skeptics like to look at the flood as God's way of dealing with humanity after sinning too much. But, you know, with all due respect, that's a very simplistic way of looking at the flood. After all, today's society is just as corrupt and depraved, if not worse, than the era before the flood. So why would such a, a, a global judgment only happen in Noah's day? The answer is, there's more, uh, far more complex issues going on in the days of Noah than just human sinning. Because if it was just human sinning alone that caused the flood, then today we would have already been destroyed uh, actually a long time ago. So the flood served three purposes. One, to destroy these Nephilim giants. 
to punish the angels who committed these relations with women and make an example of them so that no other angel will, would ever attempt this again. And three was to save humanity from certain destruction. And what Satan had done was a very good idea and it would have worked if he wasn't dealing with a God. I mean, our God said, eh, not going to work. I'll just wipe them all out. So go ahead, Satan. It's not going to work. Well, Satan did. <laughs> of course, it didn't work. God wiped everybody out. The truth is, this was a lot more than an overreaction from God. You know, a lot of, a lot of skeptics and even some pastors and preachers like to say that the flood was God's way of preserving the human race and, and bloodline before it came completely corrupted by the Nephilim giants. Well, a lot of people today point to the flood as proof that God is angry and, and, at humanity all the time and willing to just kill millions of people in genocide on a whim. But the biblical truth was that God sent the flood to preserve humanity, not to make sure uh, that that we were destroyed by this corrupt seed. If that would have happened, there would be no future. There would be no forgiveness. Every person would spend eternity in hell. The flood was God's way to keep hope alive for all people. This was not some arbitrary act by a cruel and mean God who said, oh, I'm sick of these people. I'll wipe them out and start over. There was nothing like that. So when you hear that, now, now that we have a, a, at least a, a base understanding of who and what the Nephilim were. We backed it up with other scripture. We know this was real. We know it actually happened. We know how it led right up to the flood. <coughs> so, this flood. Why was Noah saved? Why was he saved from... Because he didn't have any of the corruption of this fallen angelic Nephilim blood. And out of all of the people on earth, how many people could have possibly been on the earth at that point? Said they were marrying and giving in marriage and, you know, life, they were building. Life was going on as normal. Well, you know, across the world, there may have been billions of people just like there are now. It doesn't say, but we have to assume there was a lot of people. Why was, why was Noah not corrupted by this? Noah was chosen to carry on and restart because he was he was a believer in God and also he was perfect in his generations which meant that this genetic bloodline and ancestry was 100% human no one else was now if he was perfect in his generations which is what the Bible says perfect in his generations this poor guy was the only one left who wasn't infected with this Nephilim bloodline he wasn't a part of this hybrid, um, hybrid human that, that had plagued humanity. The Hebrew word for perfect in that verse is tamasim, which means complete or whole, with reference to the health and condition. Um, his DNA was pure. This is the same word, and, and I know this um, is the meaning of it, because it's the same word that's used to describe the condition of animal sacrifices. They had to be pure, without blemish. When, when man made a sacrifice for his sins, it had to be pure, without blemish. You get that from Leviticus. Because I'm not just saying that, you know, in case for you that may not know this. And whosoever offered the sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord to accomplish his vow or a free fall offering it, in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. There shall be no blemish therein. Noah, his three sons, and their wives were able to survive this flood and restart humanity because they didn't have any of this blood. But here is where it starts concerning us. Here is where, where we're going to jump into the part where the Nephilim are going to be part of the end time today because unfortunately this was not the end of it 
Noah and his family survived the flood, but the Nephilim gene came with them. Now, how can that be? Genesis 6-4, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. That's what Genesis 6-4 says. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. So this makes it clear that the Nephilim giants returned after the flood. Well, how can that be? Well, the angels, these angelic angels who left their estate, weren't in the flood? This was a counter move by Satan. Remember before the flood, God said, go ahead and do that. I'll wipe them out and start over. I still have some clean ones here that don't have your DNA, and that's what he did. Satan said, oh yeah, I'm sending my angels back there. We're going to do it again. So it makes it clear. They returned after the flood. Nowhere in scripture is it again written that angels ever cohabitated and or had relations with human women after this flood. Genesis 6, Genesis 6 is the only instance of this. So how did the Nephilim return? How could this have happened? Well, as usual, the Bible holds the answer of how the Nephilim bloodline would be with us here today and the important part that they're going to play in the end times. I see we're at the top of the hour, though. I'm going to take a short break. When I come back, we're going to talk about how the Nephilim came back after the flood, how they're here now, and the role that they're going to play in the end times. Whatever you do, my friends, don't go away. The best brands for providing the basic needs were disaster strikes. And they have free shipping on every order. Nothing's easier than their free shipping policy. That's right, 100% free shipping. Your emergency food is usually shipped within three business days. It's fast, effective, and free. Does it get any better than that? The food you need when disaster hits. Sign up today at WDeanShook.com. That's WDeanShook.com. Professional identity thieves constantly search your information for vulnerabilities. At LifeLock, relentless protection of your identity is their primary mission. They help ensure that you stay ahead of identity thieves. LifeLock is first in the industry to offer proactive identity theft protection. They're level one compliant under the payment card industry data security standards. They have direct access to fraud resolution teams within their extensive network of lenders and service providers. They are experts through leadership with internationally recognized experts in privacy and security, technologies, fraud, and criminal methods. They also partnership with FBI law enforcement and the National Organization for Victims Assistance. Sign up today at WDeanShook.com and receive a 30-day free trial and 10% off your final purchase. The W. Dean Shook program has partnered with LifeLock to make sure your identity remains safe and secure, guaranteed. Get your 30-day free trial of LifeLock's industry-leading protection at WDeanShook.com. That's WDeanShook.com. GoDaddy offers everything you need to make a name for yourself on the web, from domain names and website builders to complete e-commerce solutions. We've earned our place as the world's number one accredited domain registrar by delivering world-class products at competitive prices and support them with industry-best services delivered 24-7, 365. We're proud to serve our customers from locations around the world 
Sign up now at WDShook.com and get your domain name as low as...